Hey, welcome to Addison Runberg's podcast. I'm here with Elise Swafford. She is my sister and has accomplished a lot so far in her life. Today we talk about working as waiters, pets, and our childhood. We tell a lot of funny stories and it's a really great time. This podcast is brought to you by Origin of Legends and Secrets of the North. Do you like reading? Do you like young adult adventure stories? Then check out my book, Origin of Legends and the Secrets of the North, on Amazon today. What is the funniest waiting experience you've had so far? Hmm. Well, there's definitely been a lot of them with serving. I've been serving for just about three years now. But I guess I'm going to go back to um, one of the ones when I was in the Moorhead Buffalo Wild Wings. And we had a college night there where, like, all the college kids would come, and it was super crazy. And um, it was, like, one of my first experiences serving, so I was still, like, really new and kind of, like, scared about everything. And I got an eight top, which, like, for me at the time was a lot. And it was all, like, like 20-something college guys, and they were, like, super rambunctious and just, like, drinking tons and tons of soda I had to get them like a whole bunch of refills and (laughs) like they were just being super rowdy and I'm not exactly sure what happened but like someone like body slammed the other one onto the table and they ended up (laughs) snapping the table off of its like (laughs) leg and so like literally the table was just like balancing all the drinks of, like, all the Mountain Dews and all the coffee just, like, <laughs> fell onto the ground. And, like, all their wings onto the ground. It was super, super messy. And they were all, like, so embarrassed. And then, like, uh... <laughs> since they, like, had done it by being, like, rowdy. Like, it's not like the table just broke. Like, they, like, body slammed into it. Like, it was so awkward because my manager made me get their contact information so that they could pay to replace the table. <laughs> and, and it, like it was super super awkward because I was so new to serving so like it was just really really weird but pretty funny also yeah early on that would be such an intense experience to go through as a waiter well right <laughs> like it was so busy at the time that like there was no managers free to like help me so like they were not done eating and they didn't have a table anymore and all of the tables in the restaurant were full so oh my gosh it was just really, really, like, a weird experience, and, like, <laughs> <laughs> well, my worst time, or, like, probably funniest time, I guess, I was working at this place called the Bistro, and I was super hungover from partying the night before, <laughs> and I just was, I felt like I needed to throw up the whole time. I felt, like, pale and sickly. And so I'm doing my best, although I'm trying to be nice, and I go out to take this new table's order, and it's just me and one other guy there, and I start taking their order, and my nose just starts gushing blood, and it drips all over my notepad. (laughs) And so I was like, excuse me a moment. I run to the back, and then I'm just like, yeah, I think you're going to have to take this, man. I can't can't do anything right now. (laughs) It was bad, but yeah, that was probably my worst. Oh, yeah, so okay. What's your best customer that you've had? Oh, hang on. I have one more that I have to say for the funny one. Okay. This is just one random thing I just thought of. Is like, this was another college night at Buffalo Wild Wings, and I was walking so, so fast. And like, there was this little kid that was just like running around in the walkway. And I just did not see at all. And I just <laughs> freaking took the kid out. Like, oh. knee to the kid's face. And oh. the kid just oh. fell down. It was really, really bad. But, like, oh. luckily the mom wasn't, like, mad at me at all because she was just, like, she had been telling the kid to sit down, I guess, a lot. And so she wasn't mad at me. But I felt terrible. Okay. Yeah. Just the other day, I almost did that same thing to a kid, but luckily, like, both of us saw each other, so we didn't collide, but... Yeah, yeah. <laughs> he was around, and the parents just, like, they don't I want know. him to be, but they still do. <laughs> uh, any other funny times? Waiting? Um, no, I'm gonna, you know, I'm gonna be done with those. <laughs>
<laughs> okay. Yeah. Um, I guess one other time I've had recently, it was very busy night, Friday night. Um, I, I was pretty new at the time at Olive Garden. So I was like still learning the ropes there. Sure. I take this couple's order and the guy like he just orders plain spaghetti with meat sauce right away and then nothing else on it so then i get them their salad and breadsticks just like a couple minutes before their food comes out and like obviously they like a little more time with that but i'm running around as fast as i can and that's just when it came out so mm-hmm. bring them the spaghetti and then he's just like oh you know what i want meatballs with this i'm like okay that will take a couple more minutes i'll just say no and he's like yeah that's okay so i ring it in and then like five ten minutes later i come back with the meatballs his whole plate is totally finished and i'm just <laughs> like oh no <laughs> you hate all your <laughs> spaghetti <laughs> and he's like he just gives me this dash glare i'm just like uh do you, do you want him still and he's like Yes, I want them, but oh, no. you should get the food out together. <laughs> oh. <laughs> I'm, just, I'm I'm really sorry, sir. Like, okay. if you had time, it would have came out closer together, and like it's really busy, so that's why I took a few minutes to get them done back there. He's like, "Well, <laughs> that okay? Something exactly like that happened to me literally like last week." I'm super, super busy, like so busy. I had like seven tables and there was like five or six people at each of them. And I'm like running my butt off. It's so busy that night. And I just like, I see that my one table got their food and I just go over there and I'm just like, hey guys, like did everything come out okay for you? And the lady, like I'm just expecting like a, yep, we're good. And I was just going to keep walking. (laughs) But she just looks at me like super, super pissed off. And she's like, well, no, actually, we're not okay. Um, all of our food came out at the same time. And we didn't get our appetizers ahead of time. I'm like, you know, uh, at Olive Garden or something, I understand. It's maybe a little different. Like, you got to be, like, on your shit. But, like, at B-dubs, it really is, like, more laid back. Like yeah. that happens. Well, all like the time. wings aren't that different from an appetizer. No, like like, aren't like appetizer in most places. Right, and like people get their food all the same time, all the time at beat ups. It happens all the time, and normally people are just like, "Oh no, that's fine, I don't care." But this lady is just like, "Well, no, actually, we're not okay." And like I was just like, "Oh, okay. Well, I think the reason why that happened is because you guys ordered fried pickles, mozzarella sticks, garlic mushrooms, and a chili con queso as your appetizer, and then for your food, you just ordered you just ordered one small boneless t- for everybody to share. So like, obviously, that's gonna take a lot for everybody to share too. Oh my gosh! Yeah. And it's just like, well, I just like, what is the difference between that and those appetizers? And she made such a big deal about it that she got all her appetizers for free because. She had to talk to the manager because it wasn't acceptable. Yeah. It's just like... Uh, yeah, like, okay, another bad time for me recently was <laughs> Saturday lunch shift. Um, these people come in and... Frick, I'm losing my train of thought. <laughs> <laughs> oh, fuck, I had it ready to go. I forgot. <laughs> We're just going off on a tangent of like horrible, like it's not even really funny stories. It's just like horrible just things that have happened to us. Okay, wait, I've got it again. Um, so everything goes perfectly for the meal. I get everything out, perfect timing, exactly what they ordered, and then it's time for them to go. And they're already paying on the little computer that we have at each of the tables, called as he asked. And so. I'm like, oh, okay, you guys ready to go? You need anything else today? Do you want some boxes? And they're like, yeah, a box would be nice. And so I bring the box as soon as possible, give it to her, and I'm like, if there's anything else you need, I'll be around. And so then she kind of gives me a weird look, like I'm forgetting something, but she's already paid on the little z so I'm like, they, I think they're good to go. Like five minutes later, my manager comes up to me, and she's like, Addison, um, did you recently have a person who got whole grain gluten-free rigatoni and I'm like uh yeah and she's like did you not box up their food for them and not give them mints and I'm like uh 
uh, no, I didn't do those. <laughs> 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 and she's like, at Olive Garden, we go above and beyond for each and every customer. And oh so you've got to be. <laughs> I was like, okay, I'm sorry. <laughs> Are you serious? <laughs> yeah, like, I was just, in my head though, I was just like, wow, like, that's this is like, like one of the times I've not done that though, too. So I'm just like, I seriously am getting called out for this stupid, like, yeah. Like, that when you're in a like, room, you don't, have time, you don't have that much time to box up every single plate of food at the table for the people. Like, okay, that right there <laughs> is exactly why I work at Buffalo Wild Wings and not like somewhere fancy because I cannot take people's shit. They just, like, they expect to be treated like royalty, and they're, like, <laughs> it's just, like, at Vito. Yeah, like, it's not that fancy of a place. It's really not fancy. Like, <laughs> at Vito's, there's so many times where, like, people are just, like, your tablets aren't working. Like, we, like can you find us another tablet? Like, all the tablets are taken. Can you make ours turn on? And sometimes I, when I'm really busy, I'm literally just, like, yeah, they've just been dropped so many times that they just don't work anymore. That's B Dubs. <laughs> Welcome to <laughs> Buffalo Wild Wings. <laughs> like, okay. <laughs> me, and, me and Chris got um we got like on a break the other day. So we were like walking out the front door to go take our break together and there's just a tampon like on the sidewalk right in front of B Dubs. And <laughs> I just go like this. I'm just like, oh, there's a tampon right in front of our store. Welcome to <laughs> Buffalo Wild Wings. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome to Buffalo Wild Wings. <laughs> 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 uh, have you have any uh, really, really nice customers? Everyone still like good one. Yeah, so, I mean, I guess the example is, like, this one time when I was in Moorhead, and, like, it's not the most perfect example because this table actually was, like, pretty annoying during this whole service. Like, they had kids, and they were really loud and, like, pretty needy. They, like, just needed me to, like, get a lot of refills for them and, like, get, like, extra things for them. And I had been kind of frustrated with them because um, their kids were just making, like, a huge mess, like, tons and tons of stuff on the floor. And, like, the parents just kind of seemed out of it. Like, they didn't really care. Um, but then I went to you know, like pick up my credit slip at the end and they had tipped me $10 on the credit slip and then wrapped inside the credit receipt was a hundred dollar bill. And they had what? written like, you did a great job. And I was like, holy crap. Like really, really shocking. Cause like I had heard of that happening to some people, you know, but I yeah. never thought it actually, so that was like really, really awesome. And that would probably be like the nicest customer I've ever had. Like not like through the service aspect, but just as far as like that was really generous. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah and I've had was... one that as well. That was like uh, just two, a couple of two, and Sully and I were working, and we just had a really great rapport with them. We were talking about traveling to like Las Vegas, and they were just telling us all these cool places we could go and we get there, and they really left me a one hundred dollar tip, and it was just two people, so. Wow. Yeah, I needed to. It wasn't at all grand. It was at the bistro back in the day. But That is really cool. Like, it's just really cool when stuff like that happens because, like, there's so many times as servers where, like, we just get treated like crap and we're, like, people's punching bag. And then, like, you just have to clean up after people and they don't even tip you. And sometimes it feels really, like, crappy. And you just kind of feel, like, low about yourself because, like, a lot of times people condescend to you and, like, Every once in a while when you get a table like that, that just, like, it, it just, like, it makes you feel super appreciated. And it's like, wow, like, I really am a good server. And, like, yeah. some people are just crappy, but, like, it's nice to see that there's people out there like that, you know? Yeah. Sorry. I think I get, yeah, what were you saying before that, though? Oh, I was just trying to think of, like, any table I've had where, like, during the whole service that they were just, like, extra nice to me. And, like, I think a good example of that um would be like when I first started at the V Dubs in Brainerd here. Um, I was like super nervous just because it was like a new store. Like I was familiar with the menu and everything, but like I was just like super, super nervous. Um right. and I think it was like pretty obvious and this table yeah. like 
Yeah, like, the lady, um, she was just, like, really nice to me. Like, a lot of times, like, people don't really answer you. Like, if you ask, like, oh, how's everybody doing tonight? Like, a lot of times I just get ignored. Um, <laughs> but she was, like, I really don't... Nice. Yeah, like, I don't ask them, like, if they're out, um, like, celebrating every anything. Like, I know everyone asks that, but I have changed to asking them if they're doing well so far today. And, like, everyone seems to respond well to that so far. Yeah, because, like... If you ask, like, if any, if they're doing anything special, then a lot of times they're just like, no. Yeah. <laughs> and and so, like, since like, I'm trying okay. to sell them wine, I'm trying to get them in this, it's like a sales tactic thing where you get them to say yes, like, two or three times in a row. And then once they do that, when you ask them if they want, like, alcohol or wine or anything, they're more likely to say yes to that as well. So it's like a sales tactic. Oh, that's cool. Yeah, I forget the name of it, but, like, it's a well-known thing. Like, you get got some, like, oh, thought you'd come out for dinner tonight. They're like, yeah, having a nice day so far. Yeah, do you want some wine? Like, a free sample of wine? And then they're like, yeah, sure. And then, like, after they have the free sample, they're way more likely to get the wine after that. That's, like, the thing you told me about how, like, if you have two really good jokes and you, like, get someone to laugh at the first two, then they'll pretty much laugh at, like, anything you say after that if you're, like, trying to be funny, even if it's not, like, the best jokes. I remember you telling me that, and, like, it actually really? is so true. I don't even remember telling you that, but that's funny. That's, like, the same thing. <laughs> no, you that's, told like, me that. the same exact thing. And you told me that you were, like, testing it out at college parties and that it totally works. Wow. That's hilarious that I was doing that. I used that I did. <laughs> Oh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, all right uh any other like nice customers not necessarily that like tipped really well but just were like really nice i've had a few definitely like none that super stick out in my mind but um oh actually no there is a good one so yeah when i first started working at the brainerd b-dubs like this guy named david he's like a regular at the b-dubs here like he comes in at least like three times a week um <laughs> and like I, it was my very, very first day at the speed ups and like he ordered, um, a chili con queso and for some reason, I don't know why I just put like fried pickles in and so fried pickles came out and I wasn't over there when they came out and so the, the like food runner brought it to the table and they were just like, oh no, we didn't order that and then the food <laughs> brought it back and then like, so they just thought that was the wrong thing. So they were still waiting for the chili con queso, which I never rung in because I, I accidentally rang in fried pickles. And so like a really long time went by and then I stopped over there and like, they were just like, we still haven't gotten our chili con queso. And then I like figured out what happened. And like, so like, it wasn't like a huge, huge deal, but like, I mean, I did mess up and, um, uh -huh. he still ended up tipping me like, um, I can't, it was like a $50 tab and he gave me like. He gave me, like, a lot of money. He gave me, like, $20 or something. And I was just, like, oh, really, wow. really happy with That's it. That's really nice. Yeah. yeah. And, like, and he said, like, welcome to Baxter B-dubs and definitely be seeing you around. Like, he, like, wrote that on the credit receipt, which was, like, really, really cool. And he, like, said to me, like, you did a really good job and stuff. So he, like, made me feel, like, welcome and, like, not bad that I messed up, you know? Yeah, that's totally cool. This one that's kind of, like... Ring it, like, uh, I'm remembering right now. It was, like, a girl our age, and she was, just seemed normal. And then she wrote me this long note that's, like, God loves you, and you're, he thinks you're a great person, or something like that. <laughs> like, a super religious long note. And I'm just, like, I mean, this is nice, but it's also kind of weird, but. <laughs> okay, something like that happened to me, too, at the um, Moorhead beat-ups. There was this girl named Elise as well. Like, she had the same name as me. And, like, she weirdly, like, really, really liked me. And she was just like, you are just the cutest thing. Like, you are, seriously, I feel like we're connecting on such a spiritual level. Like, we've got the same name. We're both really nice. We've got the same people. name. <laughs> and, like, and she was just like, um, she wrote this super, super long, like, message to me in, like, this paper and put it in there. And she, like, put her phone number down and was just like, oh, we should hang out sometime. And, like, I didn't really have a lot of friends at the time, so I was like, okay, whatever, I'm just going to text her. And I was like, hey, this is Elise from b -Dubs. like, here's my number. And she texts me back this, like, five-page text about how she wants me to join, like, her religious group and, like, be part of her <laughs> meeting. And, like, I was just super, like, oh, uh... no, 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 no. And, like, I just didn't text her back. 
And then since I didn't text her back, she texted me like several times <laughs> a week for the next few uh... bringing stuff like, hey, I'm really sorry if I scared you off with that long text. Like, I still hope we can be friends. And like, after that whole thing, I was like, I am just not going to text this girl back. And like, it was really bad. And then I eventually ended up seeing her at B-dubs again. And it was so uh... awkward. So, so yeah, awkward. and Baxter and Brainerd, it's like you're gonna see the same people probably I every know. once in a while. That's the thing, you do, and it's like, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, like these other old people, like, really liked me, a group of four of them, and the whole time they were just like, Oh, you look like this actor that we know, and they were like looking up a bunch of pictures of this really like black and white actor, and I'm just like. I, I don't look like this person, but I'll take it. Whatever. I know. I've had people say that before to me, too. They're like, you look just like this person. And they show me a picture, and it's like, I see absolutely no resemblance at all. Like, yeah. None, basically. I know. I know. It's so-, so funny. Have you tried a blazing wing? Yes, I have. Um, when I worked at the Moorhead beatups, I was a trainer. And so I, like, in the Moorhead beatups, we had a lot of turnover because it's a college town. So, like, there was a lot of employees, like, going home for the summer, like, getting done with college and leaving. So I was training people in, like, two, three shifts a week. So, like, basically almost every, at least, like, several of my shifts I'd be training. And we had this thing where if you're, if it's like your first day, you have to try a blazing wing part of initiation. But uh-huh. the person that's training you has to eat one too to like for more mm. support. Oh, and that's so, really funny. <laughs> yeah. And like after a while they like after this one guy left, they weren't as like adamant about like making you do it. But like this one cook got like a sick pleasure out of like watching us die over eating the blazing wings. And so he would like <laughs> Force me to do it every time. Like he'd, be like, he'd be like, nope, it's the first day. You have to do it. And, like, oh he's like, you have to do it, too. So I was eating, like, I was eating, like, a blazing wing, like, three times a week. And they would do this thing oh. where they, like, make it be extra, extra saucy just to make it, like, that much worse for us. <laughs> and, oh, my God, it was just horrible. Like, the whole rest of the day, my lips would, like, be swollen and my eyes would just be, like, tearing. It was absolutely horrible. Oh, man. I've never actually tried Blazing myself. I really, really don't recommend it because, like, it's just, <laughs> like, if you even just touch it with your finger, it, like, burns your finger. So, like, obviously that's not good for your stomach. A lot of my friends would always try them, and, like, they were trying to be like macho and like they I like Hubert and Sully always try to do it. And they're just like I'm like, why you guys? You obviously don't like it. Your eyes are like watering. I know. You, yeah. I it really just seems do. horrible. <laughs> Whenever people want to do the blazing challenge at B Dubs, I really always I pretty much always <laughs> am able to talk them out of it. Because like <laughs> it's just stupid. Like they don't enjoy the wings. It's just a waste of chicken. And <laughs> Like, no one no one has fun. I end up having to give them free milk. And they make a huge mess of the table because it's too hot. So, like, they can't do normal table manners. Like, they just freak out because it's so hot. And they, like, get stuff everywhere. <laughs> so, anytime someone wants to do the Blazing Challenge, I'm they're just like, so, like, what's the deal with the Blazing Challenge? And I'll just be like, oh, it really sucks. Like, basically, you have to eat ten traditional wings. Um with the blaze and sauce on them you can't use any napkins you can't drink anything and you can't use any ranch and you have to eat them in under i think it's like 10 minutes or something i don't know and then i'm just like and and then i'm like even if you do win you still have to pay for them and the only thing (laughs) is that you get a free t-shirt and i just make it sound like really really horrible and then they're usually just like they're usually just like oh that's stupid and then i'm just like yeah but like if you want you can order normal wings, like whatever you want, and I can get you a side of blazing for free. And then you oh, can still try cool. it. Yeah, and then they're cool. just like, oh, yeah, I'll just do that. So then I'm just like, <laughs> yeah, thank you. 
because I also have to stop what I'm doing. I can't wait on my other tables. I have to bring out this giant, like, <laughs> siren and a stopwatch. And I have to sit there for 10 minutes. <laughs> and a stopwatch. Yeah, I have to sit there for 10 minutes with a blinking siren that's flashing a big red light and, like, watch them eat the I'm like, I don't have time for that. I have a lot no. of stuff to do. Uh, it's the worst when you've got stuff that takes up a ton of time. That's, like, absurd. But, like, even when it's yeah. just, like, people who, like, are taking you super long with the menu, but they're, like, asking oh you questions God. about it, no. it's, like, just, I, you're asking me about it, I don't know much more than what it says right below it. Like, come on. I know. <laughs> it's so frustrating, and it's just, like, if you don't know what you want, don't tell me that you're ready, because yeah. there is so much other stuff I can be doing. Like, so much more. I just am trying to take your order accurately and efficiently so I can get your food fast. Like, ugh. Right. But, like... It seriously is, like, especially when you have other tables that need their order taken or, like, other yeah. tables that need something. And, like, it's just, like... Or, like, what I really hate is when, like, you you bring a table their drinks and, like, they're pretty much ready to order. And you're just like, okay, I just got to go grab those guys' drinks because you got sad again already. And then you're like, but then I'll be back to take your order. So then you go yeah. get the new table drinks. And then the new table is like, wants to order right then. Yeah. And like, they get mad when you're just like, okay, no, I got to take these guys' orders first. But like, it's just like, they get mad. But like, you have to like, help the people that were there first. And like, I don't know. No, totally. Like, we kind of have the same thing. Like, as soon as someone gets sat, we're supposed to be over there offering them wine and taking the drink orders basically right away. Right. Yeah. Like, ours is, like, we're supposed to greet the table within 45 seconds. Yeah. Get same, drinks basically. for the table. Yeah. And then get drinks for the table within two minutes. And then whenever they order and get their food, we're supposed to, like, check back on their food within two minutes or two bites. And like, like, sometimes sure. it just would be best to make him wait at the table for, like, a minute or so while you're doing something <laughs> really quick. But... <sighs> It's just not how it works, I guess. <laughs> yeah. Uh, okay, do you have any cool cat facts that you know, that you want to talk about? Sure. So I have a ragdoll cat named Toby, and he's two years old now. And we've had him for two years. Um, and I never had had a cat really before that. We had one cat growing up, um, but she kind of lived in the garage a little bit. So yeah. I didn't really know too much about cats. Um, but one really cool thing that I learned about cats is that they blink really slowly at you to show affection. Oh. Um, and it's something that like, I actually like noticed Toby doing to me. Like, he would just be looking at me, and then once I made eye contact with him, he would blink really slowly a few times oh. and then look away. And so I didn't know what he was doing, so I, I got this cat book, and then I started reading about it, and I found out that that's, like, showing affection and showing love. And I was just like, oh, wow, like, that is so cool. Like, I noticed him doing it to me, and then I looked it up and found out why he was doing it, and it was just really cool to find that out. Um... And also, so it's kind of funny, now I'm, like, kind of a cat person, and, like, just today I was over at our parents' house, and, like, I caught myself looking at Chloe, my parents' dog, and, like, I was blinking at her slowly, because, like, <laughs> I do that to Toby all the time, like, I, if I look at Toby, I'll, like, blink at him really slowly, and then he'll blink back at me, and it's kind of just, like, it's kind of like petting your dog, just being like, hey, I love you, like, and it's just, like, a little small gesture that, like, I just do, like, I don't even think about it. It's just, like, what I do now when I'm, like, hanging out with Toby because, like, I want him to know, like, I love him and stuff. And I caught yeah. myself doing that to my parents' dog. And, like, she wasn't doing it back. And then I was, like, what am I doing? Like, this is not <laughs> a cat. Like, it was just really funny. Did she seem to respond to it at all? Um, she was just, like, looking at me, like, really happily wagging her tail. So then I, like, petted her. And and then she, like, she really liked it when I petted her and, like, talked to her. And, That's like, good. it's just, it's funny because, like, with cats, um, like, I mean, all cats are different. But, like, with Toby, he does not like to be petted. He doesn't really like to be held. And, like, it's a sign of respect in cats to leave them alone. So, like, a lot of times you hear about people that don't like cats, and they're just like, God, like, I really don't like cats, but, like, 
cats love me. They always come up to me and like they want attention. And that's because in the cat world, like if you're ignoring them and you're giving them their space, they're like, wow, like, yeah, I like this person. Like he's showing me respect. He's like giving me my uh-huh. space. And so like cats like that. <laughs> so That's really kind of interesting. Funny. Yeah. Yeah. And like, it's kind of opposite of dogs too, you know? Yeah, totally. Like dogs really like it when you like pet them a lot. They don't, I don't think they really like it when you stare at them in their eyes. I feel like I've heard that they don't like that, but I could be wrong. Yeah, I agree. I think that dogs find that like kind of intimidating or like scary. Yeah. Um, Also another, like just a few interesting things about cats. Um, It also shows that your cat really feels comfortable with you and like feels really safe with you if, um, they're like making eye contact with you and they yawn that's supposed to be like kind of a sign of like endearment that like they're like yawning at you and it's supposed to be like a kind gesture um and then another kind of interesting fact is that you know usually people think of like a purring cat as like oh the cat's happy it's purring and it's like calm and Mm -hmm. in some cases that's true but also, in some cases, when a cat is purring, it can actually because be because they're stressed and have anxiety. Um, and it's like a security blanket for them. So they do that. Ah, interesting. That's really cool. Yeah. And then one other interesting fact is, like, I don't know if you've ever seen this, but, like, sometimes cats do this thing where they're, like, kneading with their paws. Um, some people call it, like, making biscuits where they're, they're, like, picking up each of their feet on you okay have you ever seen that before or no yeah i think so yeah so um that's supposed to be like another big sign of affection and actually Uh what it's derived from is kind of interesting um it comes from when they're little baby kitties and they're like drinking milk from their mother um Mm -hmm. it's like supposed to be like them saying thank you to their mom because it's kind of like a little massage and then also because it helps to, like, stimulate the milk, too. So, like, that's where it comes from as when they were, like, little babies. And then it kind of is just, like, a habit that sticks with them because, like, that's, like, a really happy memory for them. So when they're happy, that kind of, like, comes out and they do that kneading thing again. So, like, Toby does it all the time when he's, like, climbing on me or, like, walking on me when I'm sleeping. Wow, that's such a cool thing. Yeah, I don't know. I really – I think little facts like that are just so cool because, like – I grew up with dogs, so I never really knew any of these things, but... Yeah. It's why, kind of... why do you think you like cats so much? Like, is there something special about cats in particular compared to dogs or other pets? Or is it just, like, you think you'd, like, love whatever pet you had? No. Um, I mean, I would definitely love whatever pet I had, for sure. But for me and my specific personality type, I think that a cat just fits me so well because, um, I, and also just Toby specifically, I'm sure I would like whatever cat I had, but like Toby just happens to be like my perfect match because what I like about him is that he is so calm and laid back. And so being around him makes me feel calm because like he is just always like completely chill and like, A lot of cats, like, are really, like, hyper and rambunctious, but for the most part, Toby just, like, walks really slowly right next to me, and, like, he really, really cares about me. He follows me from, like, every single room, so, like, no matter where I go, he follows. Even when Chris is home, like, Toby has to be right by my side, and, like, I really like it because he's, like, a little companion. Like, if I go put makeup on, he jumps up on the counter, and he lays there, and he just watches me, like... His eyes are just, like, watching me the whole time that I'm putting on makeup. And then, like, if I walk into the kitchen and I'm, like, making something, he jumps up on the counter and he lays down and he watches me. And if I go watch TV, then he comes in and he sits on the cat tree and he just hangs out with me. So he's kind of just, like, a little companion. And, like, I know that dogs do that too. But I think why I like the cat version better is because dogs are very needy. They really, like, they need your attention back, and they need your love back, and they need, like, they want you to play with them. They need you to take them outside. They need to, like, go to the bathroom outside. They need to be walked. And, like, Toby doesn't need anything from me. He prefers when I, like, don't bother him, but, like, (laughs) he's also still there. Like, I know that sounds weird, but, like. He's, he's there, and, like, I don't need to take him outside so that he can go to the bathroom. 
he can just go to the bathroom on his own and he just goes in his litter box. And like, that's a big thing for me is like, I would hate if I had to like go outside all the time and like bring him outside and take him to the bathroom. Like he can just do that on his own. He can just go to the bathroom and like scooping a litter box takes like maybe like 20 seconds and I just do it every single day. So yeah. it's like very like it doesn't smell. It's like very clean because I do it every single day. Um, so I really like that fact. And then like playing with um, Toby is a lot easier than playing with a dog, in my opinion, because like playing with Toby, I can just lay on the bed and hold a little like fishing pole. And then like he has a great time and like he gets all his energy out and I can be just laying on the bed. Whereas if I had a dog, I would need to take them on walks and, like, go outside and, like, throw the ball for them and stuff. And then... That's one thing I actually really like about dogs. Like, when we had Homer, Sylvia's dog, in the winter, every day, no matter how cold it was, I still had to bring him on, like, half an hour walk, like, twice a day. And, like, See, it was just a great way to make me get out of the house and still right. enjoy the outdoors, even though it is kind of cold out. And that's the flip side of it, where, like, that is the reason that people should want a dog because it makes you get out and it makes you be active and it makes you like go enjoy the outdoors, which is really, really good. Like it is a good thing for you. And like, but for me, I think like rather than like being like, okay, this is what like I should do. Like this is like, even though it's like better for me, it's kind of cool because like Toby doesn't make me change my lifestyle for the better. He just like fits into my lifestyle perfectly as it is. And even though it probably, you know, it would be good for me to have, like, a dog because it would make me be way more active. It's totally true. But Toby fits into my lifestyle, like, perfectly as it is. And then another big thing is that, like, I, like, if you have a dog and you go to work for, like, eight hours, the dog is, I mean, it's really bad to leave a dog at home for eight hours by itself, like, in a kennel or even just in the house. Like, and with Toby. When Homer was here. And, like, I left just for probably an hour. I got back home, and I could hear him howling and barking from inside the house. I'm like, oh, no. Hopefully the neighbors didn't have to hear him for too long. Or hopefully he wasn't doing that the whole time. Right. And, like, with Toby, we could be gone for a whole weekend, and he would be just fine. Like, as long as he has food and water and his litter box and his cat trees and his toys he's got absolutely everything he needs and like he does like us to be home and like he loves spending time with us but like he will be just fine if he's home alone and we don't have to worry about him making like meowing like crazy or like you know not being able to go to the bathroom I just I like the freedom that comes along with the cat because I don't have to be like okay I gotta make sure I get home to let the dog out or I gotta make sure that You know, it's like he can just take care of himself and I can go about my life. And it's great to have him because I love him and he makes me so happy. But it also doesn't make me have to, like, have, I don't know, it's kind of like, you know, not as much responsibility, I guess. Yeah, I totally feel that because I like being able to just do whatever I want, kind of, and not have the responsibility that this being needs me to do something every single day. And if I don't do that, it's not going to be okay. Right. Like... Today, I got done working at my parents' house, and, like, if I had a dog, I definitely would be like, okay, I got to go home. I got to let the dog out. Got to make sure it's got dinner. Got to make sure it, like, can play with it. But, like, I got done working, and I was like, I kind of feel like going into Brainerd and getting some stuff, you know? And, like, Toby's going to be just fine because, like, it's not like he's getting anything different, you know? It's the same thing as when I'm home because also another cool thing about Toby is that he's not like um, the parents' dogs where, like, they feed their dogs, like, half a cup in the beginning of the day, half a cup at the end of the day, and, like, they have a feeding time. And when you feed them, they, like, scarf it down. We just, like, Toby has a water dish in the tub because he knocks over his water dish. <laughs> <laughs> One then, slight negative. <laughs> yeah. And then he's got a wet food dish and a dry food dish. And, like, he just eats them at his own leisure and he has no feeding time he just eats when he's hungry and like if i see that his dry food is kind of low then i add more dry food to it or if he eats all his wet food then i give him a new can so like it's kind of nice because he's just like i don't know he he really is just the easiest pet i've ever had like even more so than like guinea pigs or hamsters because like with those you gotta like change their whole cage and like it's really hard to clean the cage like 
seriously, his litter box is so easy to scoop. And, like, feeding him is a breeze because there's not even a set feeding time. It's just, like, he's the easiest pet ever. And, like, also he just brings so much joy to me because he's hilarious. And he is always making me laugh and smile, which I think is, like, awesome to have in your life, you know? Yeah. Cats are a lot more capable than a lot of other pets. Like, in my neighborhood, yeah. there's, like, three or four feral cats. And it's just awesome seeing them. They're like prowling around, catching birds all the time. They don't need anybody. They just do what they want. <laughs> yeah, it's really interesting. That's another thing from my cat book is that like dogs depend on us and yeah. they like gain, they gain so much like, like Todd us. could not survive in the no, wild. He's a Todd white wiener dog. He's about the size of a squirrel. <laughs> but that's like what's so cool about cats is that like over the like years cats decided to be with us because like they gained some things from being with us but they don't need to be with us like they could survive just fine on their own you know yeah they really so like just this, even in like a house environment or out in your yard they can find water or if they're really hungry they could probably catch their own food too whereas right. like the guinea pigs couldn't even go into some shade yeah. or something they just died right. <laughs> yes. <the> <laughs> I don't want to go into that, but yeah, me either. <laughs> yeah. I don't know. It, that's like a really cool thing about cats is like he just takes care of himself. So it's like it's more just like we have another member of the family. Like rather than having like a a, a dog that's like completely dependent on us and needs so much from us rather than feeling like that i just feel like it's another member of the family and like he kind of does his own thing he kind of just takes care of himself i just make sure he's got food and he's good and he makes me laugh and he like brings me so much happiness so like he's just like the perfect pet for me yeah that's awesome um all right i've got one more question maybe if you could put anything on a billboard in Baxter that everyone in town would see, what would you put on there? <laughs> <laughs> well, <laughs> I don't know if I want to say my answer like, that I'm thinking of. Go for it. Well, I always see the really religious billboards everywhere. Like, that just say, like, Jesus, for example. <laughs> There's one that literally says Jesus with a period after it. <laughs> and sometimes I just want to, like, make a billboard that just says, like, atheism with a period after it. Like, <laughs> I just see what people would do. Or, like, something like that. Because, like, I don't try and push my beliefs on anybody. So, like, I just think it's ridiculous when they, like, make billboards like that. There's actually a really humorous religious kind of um, billboard in Duluth here. Sylvia and I drive by it every time we go to Sylvia's work. Um, it says, it's for this Catholic radio station, and it says, Catholics believe what? Tune into this radio station to find out. <laughs> oh, that's funny. Isn't that actually pretty good? <laughs> yeah, that's funny. Sylvia said she doesn't think that they know it's humorous, but I'm like, yeah, of course, that's the joke. It's the whole reason they made that billboard. It's like, People kind of think that, like, Catholics do believe some of weird stuff sometimes, and that's why it's a funny billboard, which is like, no. <laughs> I don't think they get it. I think they just want people to be curious. About it. <laughs> uh, yeah. Uh, if I were to put something on the billboard, I would say just kind of like a three-sentence thing, maybe, like, eat healthy, get enough sleep, and exercise. Mine would say, get a cat. Oh, there's a rabbit outside my window now. I don't oh, know if cats oh comes you're and just catches all them. in the wilderness, Addison. I'm not. It's just, I think it's because there's like an abandoned house right next door, and it attracts all this wildlife. <laughs> it's kind of cool, though. Yeah, that's cool. All right. Um, have you learned anything interesting lately? Well, I have definitely been learning a lot about appraising, that's for sure. Yeah. Learning all kinds of different stuff about that. There's just a lot to take in, but 
learning all about that. Yeah, um, I feel like composing is kind of a boring topic, but we do know a lot about it between the two of us. I am currently like, an appraiser, and my sister is becoming an appraiser, and my dad, grandma, and grandpa all have been appraisers, and same as least since we're brother and wow. sister. Wow, we have a lot of appraisers in the family. Like, I feel like that is kind of just monopolizing my time right now, is why yeah. I bring that up, because I feel like I don't really, I haven't really been, like, focusing on much more than that right now, because yeah. that's just, like, really taking up my time. But I guess one thing I learned... Um, my friend Paige like started making these body chains and hair chains. And so she taught me kind of like a little bit about beading was really interesting because I had never done anything like that before. So cool. that's kind of cool. So what is beading? Well, basically um, she just buys these chains from various places like Joanne fabric and that type of stuff. Um, and then she picks all these different creative beads and then she just like puts them together in different like intricate patterns and stuff it's really like she has like these special tools that help her like a toolkit that help her get them on the chains and stuff which like i'm not really too familiar with but it seems like a really fun hobby that i kind of was thinking about getting into so it's kind of like creating jewelry for yourself with like materials that you get from a local craft store yeah yeah exactly Cool. And so she's building those things and selling them on Etsy now, which is kind of like an online shop. Yep. And I don't think she's quite made the website yet, but she will be here pretty soon. So, and Etsy is like, I had never really, like, I knew about it, but I didn't know too much about it. But it seems like a really cool thing. Like, you can literally just come up with your own thing and try and sell it on there. I mean, it's kind of fun. Oh, like, yeah. That is really cool. Yeah, it, like, it's cool to see that we have something like that, so you can just be creative and just see if anybody's interested in your idea, you know? Yeah, when you were mentioning it the other day, I was confusing it with what our cousin Jenny does, that Scentsy oh. thing. No, not that. Yeah, not that. I was like, oh, I wish Paige wasn't doing that. <laughs> <laughs> no, not that. Yeah. Um, Etsy is, like, for people that make, like, their own handbags or, like, they make, like, like their own t-shirts or blankets or like you know just different random things like that and then they sell them yeah that's so cool yeah and you can kind of just customize your own page on there to make it cool yeah and i think Paige said that it was about 20 cents a picture to put on your page so that's not too bad i mean hmm. so why does it cost money to post them on there well, be probably because, like, you're making money off of using their sites, and there's a lot of traffic that goes through, you know what I mean? Like, probably, yeah. like, I don't know. And so you modeled for the shoot for her websites, her Etsy pages, yeah. photos. That's pretty cool. Yeah. It was really fun because um, the whole vibe she's going for is, like, really hipster-ish. So, like, I don't usually dress like that, so... It was kind of fun. We went out and we went shopping and she just like helped me pick out a bunch of outfits that she like felt was the right vibe. Um, and it was really cool. And I ended up getting a lot of clothes that like I actually really like, but I would never pick out myself. So it's kind of fun. Cool. Oh, did you get to keep those clothes? Yeah, I, I actually bought them. <laughs> oh, sick. That's awesome. Yeah. So I will be very stylish now for the summer. I need to buy some new clothes. The last clothes I bought were probably like two years ago. <laughs> See, and I really did not need more clothes. I don't have enough room in my closet as it is, so I really did not need more clothes, but <laughs> it was really fun, and like, it's hard to pass up like getting new clothes, you know? It's always fun. Oh, yeah, definitely. Like, when I got, when we were going to that buy one, get one closing sale a few years ago, that was oh, the yeah. best. <laughs> Yeah, that was, like, the prime time to get stuff. That was, like, the last time I got stuff. Like, a lot of clothes. <laughs> was it really? It was, yeah. <laughs> That's so funny. That was, like, a couple of years ago. I know, it's been so long. Luckily, people give me stuff for, like, my birthday and Christmas a lot of the time, so at least yeah. get a few things here and there. But, yeah. like, clothes cost a lot, kind of. They do last kind of a long time, which is nice, but... Yeah, they usually do. When you're doing different model poses, do you, um, what are you, what's going through your mind when you're like in the different poses? Are you just thinking about the shape of the pose or are you like? Um, 
what I kind of try and do is like, for me, it's all about like what I'm trying to portray in that photo. So like for Paige's photo shoot, um, we had a few different outfits. One of them, I was in this really dark tie dye shirt and, um, that one, she was kind of going for more of like a grungy type look, like, you know, so like when I'm posing like that, then it's like, I'm just kind of trying to like, think about the emotion I'm trying to portray and then just sort of try and have that come through in my pose and my facial expression. And then if it's like something that's really like flowy and happy, then I just try and think things like that. And I guess, I don't know, I try and, like, feel the emotion that I'm trying to portray and, like, think of, like, memories and stuff that bring up that in my mind. Yeah. And then on top of that, I also just kind of try and, like, think of the outfit I'm wearing and, like, what pose might, like, best, like, I don't know, like, make that outfit look good. Like, I was wearing this really, really, like, flowy, lacy shirt. So I kind of tried to do, like, kind of, like, elegant, like, dancey poses that really like showed how flowy the shirt was or like, you know what I mean? Like kind of just like making the outfit you're wearing, I don't know, portray that emotion, I guess. Yeah. That's really cool. That's really cool. Do are you still able to make yourself cry on command or have you lost that ability? (laughs) Are you saying from when I was a kid that I could do that? Yeah, you definitely could do that when you were a kid. (laughs) Well, I definitely can still do it. I mean, I, (laughs) I don't like I don't want to get into it too much but like if I'm in a fight with Chris and I need to like bring up some tears like you best believe I can do it (laughs) (laughs) so is that like a similar thing to like posing or is it like a step further than that I I wouldn't say that it's like fake though like I wouldn't say it's like fake crying or like I think that I'm just I'm just able to, like, flip a switch and, like, put myself in a place where I'm really feeling that emotion. Like, if I want to just portray, like, pure joy and happiness, I can, like, call up a memory on command of, like, just, like, pure happiness and, like, making that, like, shine through my eyes. Or, like, if I need to feel, like, really, really sad or upset or, like, it's just, like, really easy for me to be, like, just, like, flip that switch and, like, make myself, like, be in that place. That's so cool that you can do that. I'm well. I'm sure you could too if you wanted to. I don't think I can. I. I've I, always been really in touch with my emotions, though. I will say, like, yeah. I'm definitely more sensitive than a lot of people. I think. Yeah. Which maybe definitely. is maybe plays into that. I think so, definitely. I think I've always thought if I was trying to act and I needed to cry, I would have to like put something that stings into my eyes. To make them like oh. start watering enough. <laughs> yeah. Also, oh, you know what? I think in the, I'm not trying to like make myself sound really cool or something, but like <laughs> also, I have, like I have a ridiculously good memory. Like my memory is so 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 good. So I think that's another big thing for me is like. You do have an insane memory. It's better than mine. (laughs) So for me, it's like when I'm remembering something that made me really sad and made me cry in the past, it's not just like a vague like, oh, yeah, I was really sad that one day. Like I remember exactly how it felt like I was just like drowning and there was no hope and like I'm so, so sad. And like I can pull up that memory and like put myself right back in that memory like I'm really there. Because, like, I don't know, like, I don't know why, and I've never really noticed until, like, I got older, but, like, Grandma says it, Chris says it, you say it, Mom says it, you guys are all, like, you have such a good memory, but, like, I try and remember, like, everything about each day that I can, like, I can remember, like, days of my life, like, back when I was, like, in kindergarten, and, like, even before that, like, like, really, like, to a T, and I don't know why, but, like, I do. That's so cool. Yeah, oftentimes you remember something and then I kind of don't believe it at first, but then I eventually remember it and then I like try to convince you that you've remembered it wrong. <laughs> <laughs> that used to be like a really stupid game for you. Yeah, I know. I'd be like, wait, that really did happen, but now I've been denying it a bunch. <laughs> like, do you remember that one time that we were like driving through Breezy Point 
And there was like that little place that says motel that I think is on the left-hand side of the road. And we were driving with grandma Jerry and I was just like, Oh, model, I should go there. And then you were just like, <laughs> no, Elise, that says motel. Do you remember that? Are you sure it was in uh, Breezy or was it in Nassau? No, it was in Breezy, that little brown motel that's on, like, the left side of the road, like, past Pelican Square. Like, that's what I'm saying, though. I yeah, just remember I little, remember. like, I just remember little tiny blips like that. Like, this one day in kindergarten, Whitney Kyer was drawing the grass in, like, a straight line on the bottom of the page. Like, I made my grass be, like, fringy, and she made her grass be a straight line. So I threw my picture away, and I started drawing mine as a straight line. And then <laughs> Dee Dee the para came over and was just like, oh, Elise, you shouldn't dry your grass in a straight line like that. You should make it look like grass. And I got so mad because I was just like, oh, my God, I did draw my grass like that. But then I saw Whitney doing it like that, and I wanted to copy her. And then also, <laughs> and then also I remember my friend Marnie Gorgas when we were in kindergarten. She had these three rings that were all three of the Powerpuff Girls, Blossom, Buttercup, and Bubbles. And she told us that she was going to give one of them to each of her best friends. And she gave one to Paige, and she gave one to me, and she kept one. And we were the three, like, the three Powerpuff Girls. But mine was Buttercup, which was the, like, black-haired mean one. And I was just wondering if that, like, was supposed to mean something. Like, if she was trying to say that I was, like, mean or something. And I remember, like, really thinking a lot in depth about that. Uh, <laughs> the Powerpuff also, Girls were so sick. Like, I just uh, remember so many random little, like, blips like that and I it's just really weird like and sometimes I wonder like so why do I remember that really random thing you know what I mean like yeah. was there some importance to that like when I was that young that like that made an impression on me or like why does why did my mind decide to hold on to that you know I know and sometimes it's like kind of bad memories where like that's like one of the only things you remember about that time you're like I'm sure there was plenty of good things going on then, but right now all I can all I can remember is just this one stupid well, bad thing that happened. <laughs> right. I remember this one thing at, with Grandma Jerry, and I just remember like I was very very little. Mom could still walk, and I was just like, we were talking about bad guys. Grandma was like washing something in the sink, and like she was just like, yeah. You know, sometimes there's just bad guys, you know, and I was just like, or we were like, we were talking about like a movie and there was like some bad guy in the movie. And I was just like, yeah, but there's not bad guys like that in real life. Right. And like grandma was just like, grandma was just like, well, no, I mean, there's not bad guys like in real life. And I was like, yeah, we're like in real life. There's no bad guys, like no bad guys in real life. And then she was just like, <laughs> then she was just like, well, I mean, there are some bad guys. And I just remember, like, getting so scared. Like, I was so scared of bad guys when I was a kid, too, Liz. I would have dreams yes. where, like, there was bad guys in our yard, and I had to try to, like, fight them all. Even oh, though I was, like, a little kid. <laughs> oh, my God. Like, when she said that, when she said, like, no, Elise, there are real bad guys, like, I got goosebumps covering my whole body, and I just started bawling. And I was just, like, at Grandma Jerry's house. And she was like, no, like, don't cry. Like, you're not, you're safe. Like, and I was just bawling until she told me that there were no bad guys. And then I finally stopped crying. Oh, uh, yeah. Like, I didn't even know what they entailed, but I just knew they were, like, trying to get into our house and, like, kill us or something, I guess. But, like, no. <laughs> I know. And, like, the whole time I'm just thinking, like, I got to fight these guys. <laughs> Do you remember? <laughs> Uh, Do you remember when you found out that people die? Hmm. Like, for me, well, it's like... No, it was, like, super early on because I watched The Lion King, and then Grandpa oh, yeah. Bear died really soon after that. And Mom yeah. came out and told me... I was playing in the grass at Grandma and Grandpa um, Widelich's house, and she was like yeah, grandpa died or passed or whatever. And I'm just like, well, mom, that's the circle of life. <laughs> we just watched the movie about that, remember? <laughs> like, <laughs> and like, mom is going through a really rough time. Your dad just, just died. And I'm just like, don't care at all. <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> that's 
so Rubber funny. Mom, you just told me it's okay that Mufasa died because it's the circle of life. <laughs> <laughs> like, for me, for some reason, I, like, remember when I was told that, and I was sitting on Mom's lap, and we were riding up the elevator, and, like, like I don't know why. We must have been, like, someone must have been sick or something, but Mom was telling me that, like, this person is dying, and I was just like, but I'm never going to die, right, Mommy? And she was just like, well, someday you will. And, like, <laughs> I just started, like, hysterically bawling. Like, <laughs> hysterically. Like, and then by the time that we got up to the top of the elevator, Dad was like, like, what the fuck is going on? Like, <laughs> like, and, like, then Mom told him. And then Dad was so sick of me crying that he said, no, Elise, no one in the Runberg family ever dies. We're special and we don't die. And then, like, I was like, I was like, oh, okay, really? And then I was like, no, no, Joe, don't tell her that. No, Elise, that's not true. It's just something that everyone has to go through. And then I, like, started hysterically bawling again. And, like, it was like a huge ordeal. Like, <laughs> like it was like a really, really, like, horrible, like, thing. Yeah. And I was really confused because dad said that. So then I was like, what? <laughs> I just, one thing I kind of remember is like never really being able to believe in Santa Claus. Cause I'm pretty sure dad always just was like, you know, Santa's not real. Right. And I'm just like, I guess so. But like, what about all these TV <laughs> shows and stuff? And like everyone, <laughs> everyone else seems to think that he's real. <laughs> That's so sad. <laughs> and dad was like, He's not real. Don't worry about it. Like, <laughs> yeah, so I always thought that was really funny because, like, Sylvia was like kind of talking about how like she believed in Santa Claus for a while when she was really young in like kindergarten or whatever. <laughs> yeah. Do you do you remember ever believing in Santa Claus? Yeah, I do. Like, I definitely remember believing in Santa Claus, and like, it was. We're, like, a lot more magical. I remember the first Christmas that, like, I didn't, like, I knew that Santa wasn't real. And I remember saying to mom, wow, like, it's definitely, like, not as magical when you don't believe in Santa. And I remember she just got <laughs> so sad when I told her that. <laughs> well, I mean, obviously, like, you're just kind of being like, yeah, there's no magic of Christmas that's, like, like based it was on like, Santa. <laughs> It was, like, I had found out, like, right before Christmas, so it was just really kind of, like, a bummer, I guess, for me. Yeah. You know? <laughs> but, I, yeah, I don't know. I remember Dad always being really crabby about the whole, like, Santa thing. He really didn't want to go along with that. I That kind of, just thinking of Christmas and we're talking about Mom and Dad's house, it brings back this memory of me not being able to sleep when I'm, like, down in my room, because I thought... I heard someone walking outside and the next morning, like I finally fell asleep that night and I'm like, whatever, there's nothing there. But I went out and looked and there were footsteps right along by my window. <laughs> and I was just like, what the fuck? Did we just have- Wasn't that when Chris snuck over? Yeah. And I'm just like, oh my God, someone was fucking outside my window last night. <laughs> <laughs> and I remember you coming up to me and being like, please, like, oh my god, there was footsteps out on my window last night, and I thought I heard somebody, and then I was like, and I was like, I'm gonna go, you were like, I'm gonna go tell mom and dad, and I was like, no, no, please, no, <laughs> I was like, I'm just and I was like, they walked out to, like, by the sliding glass door and probably were trying to get in or something. <laughs> yeah. I, know, I remember, like, you, like, at first I tried to just, like, tell you not to worry about it. I was like, I'm sure it's nothing I said. Like, and you were, like, really, really, like, no, I'm going to tell mom and dad because like, you were really, like, I was and I was, like, up. Finally, like, finally, I was just like, God damn it, I have to tell him, otherwise he's going to tell mom and dad. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that was hilarious. Oh my god, that is so funny. I remember that now. Oh. Uh, Alright, well, we've got an hour here, so I think that's been a great podcast. you definitely have to come on again sometime. Definitely. This has been super fun, actually, like reminiscing. Yeah, no, it was a great, great podcast. Alright, well, see you next time. Thanks, see you next time. Bye. Bye. 
podcast you just heard was recorded with Anchor. If you want to make your own, download the Android or iOS app completely free from anchor.fm slash podcast. That's anchor.fm slash podcast.